dude imagine if like our emotions worked even more like nen we're like imagine being so angry that like when you're angry that presence exudes to the point where like it starts doing physical damage to someone that'd be kind of terrifying like it's like that scene where Hisoka exuded his Nen to Gon and Kilua when they reached the 200th floor and he wouldn't let them pass. Like, that would be terrifying. I wouldn't want to piss anyone off. I wouldn't want to get mad. Because I'd be, like, dangerous to everyone. So, the power system in Hunter x Hunter, like I said before, is called Nen. And basically, the users are able to perform features such as punch through boulders and produce lightning using their spiritual energy or aura. So, what makes these abilities so powerful like you see in the show are the conditions and the consequences of that of using that ability. So let's take the electricity produ production, for example, by our character Kilua. Kilua is able to do that because his family were or was assassins who like would train in stuff like resistance to electricity or poisons or just sort of physical resistance. So that way, like, you know, if they get captured, none of that torture, none of those torture methods would work. So when Kilua had to like find his own net ability and he decides to go with electricity it wasn't really hard for him to like produce it or like take the electricity because he was already resistant to it so like the condition was already set he had to be able to like maintain a good amount of electric electric resistance with the consequence being if he does not then i guess he just dies because it's electricity and if your body can't take that then naturally you're just frying yourself another good example of this is um kurapika's chain jail where basically, he can only use it on the Phantom Troop, which are a band of thieves that killed his entire clan for their eyes. So basically what this ability does is that he shoots, he sends out a chain that like captures the troop member. And like the thing is, it puts them into a state of Zetsu, basically meaning they can't use their Nen because that ability is used to like hide your presence. So the only way they're breaking out of those chains is if they use pure physical strength. And it was shown in the show when Kurapika fought their strongest member in terms of physical strength, he could not break out of those chains. So it's a really powerful ability to use against like any of them. Like I'm pretty sure not even like they could be really powerful with Nen, but then when it comes to the physical abilities, they would just straight up die. Cause like Chain Jail would just like keep him captured. So all Kilo has to do from there is use one one of his other abilities. So you get the point, right? Like in order for Nen abilities to be strong, there has to be a strict condition. And an even stricter consequence that's why like in if you watch the show you'll notice that like if when the character is gonna die or like if he has the ability where like if he doesn't use it correctly he'll just sort of die it just his ability gets so overpowered from that condition and consequence so basically what we're going to be doing now is comparing like what happens when you don't control your emotions to what happens when like you basically go past that consequence and just let your nan flow on un, like uncontrolled basically so let's just say your emotions are your form of nan just you can't smash through rocks but you will be able to perform amazing things or find something to create something to destroy said rock using your bare fist so basically emotions are like your motivational nan so let's get into it we're going to be using like five different emotions since there's five different nan types so let's get it it's me from editing i just realized that there are actually six nan types instead of five so <laughs> sorry but i hope you guys still enjoy the video regardless bye all right starting off with one of the known ones to be positive um happiness it like it's something that everyone wants to achieve to the point where some people take drugs to have a certain moment of being like euphoric because that euphoria like travis scott brings them to the highest in the room you get what i'm saying it was a bad joke now that i think about it that was a really bad joke like god damn <laughs> moving on um you know you get what I'm, but you get the basic idea of what i'm saying like everyone wants to achieve some form of happiness so the thing is when you let this emotion just let loose and just go sicko mode and let it control you you'll end up coming off as very annoying and obnoxious like it's okay to be happy but at the same time it's like you can say things like say if um you want a game or like you want a match and like you're super happy about it and then you start either rubbing it in their face or being very obnoxious about it then that's just going to be a negative approach to everyone you have positive energy but at the same time you're delivering negative energy for feeling so positive so in the end, it would be negative. Wow, this is some math type shit right here. But you get what I'm saying, right? When you when you let that loose, like, 
it kind of you come off as very you deliver a negative energy while have, having all the positive energy to yourself so you're not you, just, you can seem happy but it's very obnoxious it's so like when you control this um this emotion and channel it like you can be more you can have more what's the word i'm looking for you will be able to, you'll be able to spread that vibe onto others and like make them feel happy when you're like saying oh wow this i this was actually a really good game i'm so hyped good game dude and like you spread that positivity like hey maybe better luck next time dude you were actually really good stuff like that keep that positive energy spread it like wildfire and if you're just in a good mood you can channel that happy energy into like something you want to work on kind of like what i'm doing right now with this video like i was in a good mood and i already knew i had to record for friday or today because that's when you guys are going to be seeing it and like i was just like all right let's just get this recording out of the way because it's going to be lit anyway feel me so like you know in some way happiness is kind of like an emitter men type where like it just come it can come out of nowhere like i said where it could just be in a good mood for no reason and like it could just spread like infection causing more more people to be in a good mood when you deliver that positive energy because you forget if you're having that positive energy control you and you end up seeing something negative in the process then like that's not good it may not be as destructive as anger but you get what i'm saying so speaking of which moving on to the next emotion which is anger <laughs> Now, anger basically, you know, it's known to be very destructive, obviously. Like, you feel me? Every, anyone who's angry either says something that'll hurt someone or does something that hurts someone. Either you beat the hell out of them or you say something really offensive like, this is why your mom is in a wheelchair. Now, I'm not saying I haven't said that to someone. If you know where that's from, props to you. But, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's very offensive. Like, when you're angry, you get, it's like a cloud rushing to your head. Like, you, f you get all confused, your days mentally, and so like your that anger takes over, and you'll either seriously hurt someone, or just hurt someone, it doesn't really matter, or like just say something really offensive. Like it doesn't even matter what the circumstance is. Sometimes like you could be playing the game, you could be playing PUBG, and you like mess up, and you just say something really offensive, or like you could be like watching something, or like someone says something to you, and like it really pisses you off, so you say something back to them. Now remember, two wrongs don't really make a right, you feel me? So even if you're angry and you say something offensive, it's not really going to help you. It's not really going to help. It's definitely not going to be helping them. It's just going to make them feel some type of way and be like, Oh, wow, you actually got real mad at that. Um, I guess my, I guess, um, I have some power now that I, now that I um, mentioned that to you. I guess now I can, whenever you try to debate, whenever I say this and you try to debate, you're going to be pissed. So basically, you can't really rationalize properly. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, when you learn to control that emotion, for one, that energy, since it's very powerful, that that motivation, you, if you learn to channel it when you're aware, which is the key thing in all of this, make sure you're aware, when you're aware of like, oh crap, I'm actually dead ass heated right now. Like, when you're aware of this kind of stuff, you know, you get to channel that and be like, okay, let's, let's calm down, but like, don't lose focus, don't agree with the person, use that energy to like, Make sure you get your facts straight. So you should be like, "Oh, I think pineapple doesn't deserve doesn't deserve to be on pizza." Which, by the way, if you think that, fight me. I think pineapple deserves to be on pizza. That's for another time. But like, say that happens, and for some reason you got pretty p irritated at that, and like, you basically calm down. You like level yourself out and like calm down. But like, keep that same energy. But now it's un under control, and now you get to say why pineapple deserves to be on pizza. Which my reasoning is, I feel like the sweetness of a pineapple complements very well with the tomato sauce. And heads up, tomatoes are fruit, so don't at me. All right. <laughs> also, another good example of like learning to control your anger is in like martial arts type stuff. This uh, this affects me too because I practice martial arts. But like when you're really mad and you're trying to throw hands with someone or you're trying to defend yourself and you're pissed, nine times out of ten you either. For say, forget all my fo all the techniques I've learned. I'm just gonna swing my arms or flail my arms, or I'm gonna use my techniques. I'm probably gonna try to break this man's arm without you like really like taking that in. But like basically, when you're level-headed and you're calm, but you maintain that same energy, as Theodore Roosevelt said, "Keep quiet but carry a big stick." Basically, use that phrase whenever you're like you're heated and you have to defend yourself. Like keep keep your calm and stillness, and basically you channel that energy into like making sure you maintain the proper techniques so that way. You can deliver the blow, and that way, when you can keep that same force, basically, 
you don't hurt them seriously you win and sure they're gonna be hurt but at least they're not like with a broken arm you still use that energy and learn to control it basically so you know that's basically anger anger is gonna like an enhancer type thing type thing i didn't know why i said type thing but anyway type thing where like you know it's simple to understand and it could you could get angry for some of the most simplest reasons sometimes but like it's very destructive for lack of a better term like when you don't know how to control it like let's take gone for example he got so mad and remember he's an enhancer spoilers he got so mad at like one of the villains and basically he was really willing to give up his entire life and he got a huge boost of power from his anger and sadness you feel me so like that's what happens when you don't control it but when you do learn to control it it's like really powerful you get what i'm saying so let's move on to a uh, sadness <laughs> All right, sadness, depression boy, like the moment where like everyone's been there, especially me sometimes. But like, you know, we've all been there. You're just not in a good mood. Someone made you sad or like you heard news that made you sad. Like when you're in this state, you think of the worst things. You become very pessimistic. That negativity in your head can take you to very dark places where you start thinking of things you never thought you would think of. It's kind of the same thing with anger. The only difference is like, it's a lot more depressing because it's sad, <laughs> but like, you get what I'm saying? When when you're sad, you could do when you don't learn to like notice that you're sad and you learn to like tone it down or control yourself and you're not aware of it. Like you can do things. You can even end your own life or like you could you know, spread that vibe on to someone else or you know, you can it can even transmutate to anger cuz like if someone says something that makes it worse when it's unintentional, since you're not really like curt like what's the word I'm looking for? Crap, I forgot the word. Since you're not, like, really there, in the sense that, like, you're not thinking clearly because you're sad, that can easily just turn to anger and you'll end up doing something really stupid. So, you know, when you learn to control your sadness and you're aware of, like, oh, wow, I'm not in a good mood, you learn to reflect and be like, why am I so sad? No, given the fact that I understand that some people have chronic depression and, like, sometimes it just happens out of nowhere, which is why people say, in some cases, have someone listen to you. Always try to surround yourself with positive vibes. It can be hard sometimes, but you know, who am I to say it for now? I'm just giving off my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm wrong about that. You feel me? Because I like I like debating with you guys about this stuff. But back to point, like it, when you learn to control the emotion, you can figure out why am I so sad. And it could also it could also be used to empathize with others if you learn when you open up. Because like if you get someone if someone's also sad and they wanna they don't have anyone to talk to, which would be which would suck and you're sad as well you could empathize with them depending on the situation or like you could use your sadness even though it may not relate to their situation you could be like oh i get how, how your how your sadness is like i can understand now because that's a mood work for me too so you know it's kind of like the transmutation type like i said earlier where it said it would transmute into anger where in the sense that like it can turn to many different things it could turn sadness could turn to fear or like you're thinking about something and you fear that this might happen it could turn to anger or like someone says something and thinks you're not thinking clearly you get pissed and you'll do something real stupid or it could for some reason turn to happiness or like you think of something or someone brings you positive vibes or like after reflecting it you could just be happy but you know that's sadness that's what i think so moving on to the fourth emotion which is being excited all right excitement uh basically you know you know that moment where like you're super hyped about something you're looking forward to something or like there's something going down that makes you super duper like hyped so you know with this when you it's kind of similar to happiness where in the sense that like you know you get you don't know real you don't really know what you're doing you'll be you can become very hasty and like you'll make a lot of mistakes when you're super excited and you're not aware of it and you just let it go and just go berserk with it so like you know you want to learn to control that because when you do you know you can channel that energy into like making sure you're ready make sure you have you make sure you keep that same energy throughout the entire way or you know you don't become hasty you're like oh i'm so excited i can barely contain myself that's being aware of like you're excited so once you do that you just learn to like channel that energy into something else while you're waiting for that event to happen like for example i like to spar a lot because i'm a martial artist like i like facing off against opponents that are way stronger than me like not in the sense that like oh they could easily like i would like to fight floyd Med mayweather no that would be suicide but like in the sense that like someone who practices like i practice jeet kune do taekwondo and 
mixed martial arts. The, and then one of my friends practices wrestling and boxing, and he's actually really good at it. I would be excited at that because, oh, he's really skilled in this area. So not only do I get to see how far do I go, but I could also get to pick up on a couple of things that he's learned. I mean, I get excited about that, basically. So I don't want to get hasty because if I'm always excited to fight, that means I'll end up either, one, getting suspended every day at school, or two, just straight up beating the hell out of someone because, oh, I thought he was strong. Like... I, I get it, people who, I, I don't know, I don't know anyone like that, but people who are like that, look, you're not Goku, okay, you can't just run around picking fights with people, you gotta get to know the person first, for one, see if they're actually good at it, or like, if they're really interested into it at all, if their parents forced them into it, or if they're even down to spar with you in the first place, that's the only way, like, I could understand, like, oh, you're fighting this person, oh, you're sparring, that's cool, don't just push it onto them, because that's when you could come off as, like, very obnoxious, like, and very annoying. So, you know, when you learn to control it, you can remain calm, you look forward to it, and you start planning. This may just be me, but, like, not only that, you start, like, going through the possibilities of what could happen in your head while you're excited. Mostly good stuff. So, you know, I would say excit excitedness is kind of like... I don't know, it would be kind of like a specialist type if I really think about it. Or, like, a conjurer type area. Because, like, you can conjure up different emotions, because excitement can be a mixture of different emotions. You feel me? Like, you can con when you're excited, you can conjure up anger, or because of adrenaline, it could be a fight or flight situation, you can conjure up sadness, for some reason. You could conjure up, especially happiness, you can conjure up happiness, to pay, like, if it's something really good. And then, you know, it could also con it could also be made from fear, where, like, you know, it's a fight or flight situation, like anger. But moving on to fear, the last one. Alright, last but not least, fear. Um, this is something that all of us face. It could be in the biggest things like, oh, you're afraid of heights, or the smallest things like, oh, you're afraid of little puppy dogs, which is a lot of people that I know, to be honest. Moving on, fear is something that, like, most of us can't really do certain things that could either push us forward in life because of fear. But then again, fear also is, like, an important thing to us because it helps us me me realize, oh, this is really dangerous. I could die from this, basically. Like, it helps. It's kind of like... This is one thing that keeps us in our senses. You feel me? Like, because of fear, most of us are not deciding, Hey, I'm gonna jump off this bridge and do a flip, and I should be fine. Sure, it may be dangerous, but who cares? I ain't no little bitch. You see what I'm saying? Like, the fear keeps us in- Sometimes fear keeps us in line to make sure we don't do things that are stupid. Like, most of the times, fear can come in small, like, nervousness, or huge, like, oh, crap, this is happening, this is dangerous, or, hey, look, a puppy dog, I'm genuinely scared of this, or, B, like, you genuinely feel fear. So, like, when it's left uncontrolled, you could either come off as very wimpy, which sucks, but, you know, that's how it, it is what it is, you feel me? Or, like, you could come off as very much... Or you could say something that could hurt some someone or do something. Because when you're fearful sometimes, it triggers that adrenaline. You get that fight-or-flight mode, you feel me? Like, you feel like you either gotta run or you gotta face this thing. So, it's like, most of the times, some of us will pick fights, some of us will pick flight. If, like when you're scared but yeah when you don't control it it can do stuff like that but when you do when you're aware of it which is the most important thing of all of this and all of all of these again i say when you're aware of when you're scared you start realizing okay why am i scared what is this it's just a dog right and then you start you just take your breaths it's kind of like the same strategy that they tell you when you're angry well before you say anything count to 10 but if you're really heated Count to 100 because you don't want to say or do something that could genuinely hurt the person. You want to make sure that you get your point through or you get that thing done with as little repercussions as possible. So that's the most important thing when you're aware. So, you know, when you're when you're aware of that you're scared and you learn to control that emotion and you take your breaths and you realize, okay, let's confront this. Depending on the situation, like if you're being a gun held up to your head and you remain and you manage to remain calm, for one, props to you. I don't know if I would be able to do that. Be, be able to do that, to be honest. But like, props to you if you're able to do that. But like, let's say if that happens and you learn to rationalize and calm yourself down and you ju like estimate the situation where you decide, okay, maybe it's better if I just give my stuff, away, give all and give everything to him because I can get this stuff in the future. I could just grind hard, work hard and just get all this stuff back. No big deal. Or you decide, oh, wait, they're right here. He's open. Move the gun down. Take, disarm him. And, you know, become be some badass Goku-type stuff. You feel me? 
like that's what help remaining calm when you want to remain calm or like control that emotion does we're like oh crap i'm scared what do i do okay take a breath for one two two probably adrenaline is going to be pumping through your system like drugs on a sunday night all right <laughs> like when when that happens naturally you get into the fight or flight mode the flight mode might you learn to control that as well basically like that adrenaline of yours like when you calm down and like it's still pumping you're like okay um for one okay i might as well run try to run well probably won't happen because he has a gun up to your head or like you try to fight or like you just disarm the adrenaline altogether and remain try to remain calm as best as you can and just give him everything you got because your life isn't your life is most important right now because you can get all the stuff that you had on you at that moment another day you feel me if it was your wallet you could probably cancel out everything the only thing you'll have is your money but like you can always get that back another day you can always grind hard it's not the end of the day it's not the end of your story all right so like when you learn to control it it's like you know you don't overthink you're not nervous you don't say or do something that could cost you your life or you can hurt or hurt cost someone else's life or just hurt someone's feelings period like when you learn to control it in some ways i don't really know where to put it it put the fear it's kind of like a specialist type thing because it can trend you to many different things where like you start you get so scared you start smiling and you laugh and you're somehow you for it for some reason which would be kind of weird when you think about it but like you could also transmute it to anger or sadness or genuine excitement because of the general adrenaline you can do something that could either come off as badass or very suicidal but yeah it's kind of like a specialist type man specialist man type i cannot speak but you get what i'm saying right so in the end emotions are kind of like a motivational men where in the sense that like when you put all that energy into a certain condition being that thing you want to do and the consequence of you not doing it is well guess what i won't be able to do this like i want to and that means that like i won't accomplish this and this could lead me down this road like you can when you really think about it like that's your consequence and that consequence it may seem small now but in the future when you really think about it it could really affect you in a certain way so that's why it's important to control your emotions instead of like letting it run rampant and you just not put it anywhere and just let it control you every time you're in an argument or whenever like you're just in a good mood you just learn to channel that energy into something you want to do or channel that energy to spreading it so that way everyone else you know gets in a good mood or like you can help motivate others to do the same so in the end that's basically what this is all about being able to channel all that emotional energy all that negative energy from anger and sadness or even that positive energy from happiness and excitement into something that you want to do so that way you can accomplish amazing things you can accomplish your dreams that you want to because in order to accomplish your dreams you don't even need something fancy like a microphone or com cool computer you just need to be consistent and make sure you're doing it because you're very passionate about it and make sure that your work that you're doing is a half-assed so that's the importance of like making sure that you channel that energy and have that motivation to do it so yeah that's gonna do it for today's video um uh, it's my first video first kind of video i'm doing something like this i kind of enjoyed doing it even though recording was kind of a pain in the ass due to the fact that i had to be retaking over and over but it was still fun to get this out let me know in the comments down below of what you think about like this entire idea that i just put out like this is the fir my first time doing something like this so if i made any mistakes let me know if you want to see something else that i talk about in this kind of setting also let me know don't forget to subscribe to the channel because i'm going to be way more consistent now i'm trying to post every friday try so that way i can bring out quality content without like missing a beat so you know thank you guys so much for watching and remember kids hitting it from the back or the front has its own benefits